It's Daybreak on Trust Television. Is that segment where we bring you all of the happenings that made it to the front page of the newspaper this morning. And as it's a tradition here, we would begin with the Daily Trust. By the way, the Daily Trust is celebrating 25 years of robust journalism in Nigeria. We begin with the major story that made it to the front page. Teenager killed as customs official chase smugglers. I don't understand the number of things that happen in this country, you know. Um, do you go shooting randomly at, at people because you're trying to catch a smuggler? We, what we is the essence if you cause this lack number of collateral damage? And retraining, uh, and it looks like we're not taking it quite seriously because there are some who have, you know, not fired a gun in a long time. So you the know. moment that adrenaline pump, you know, goes you up, know. Uh, go things like this are, and, are and what happens to some of the aerial uh, support systems mm. that they've got why, why do you have to engage in that kind of long chase when you can just call for area backup what? Yeah. Uh, whatever the details you'll find them on pages 5 of the daily trust and two other stories uh, the second biggest lead here is with the CBN CBN's investigator investigators passed Stalks Tinibu's assignment. Yeah. Allegations irrelevant to Abaz's new role, yeah. according to the presidency, and crime busters should have impeccable character. You know, it reminds one of that popular say that he who comes to equity. Yeah. Uh, but but also I, I I feel like this is an you know ad hominem in the sense that you're trying to discredit the person, not necessarily what he's doing. But you're trying to, you know, put the spotlight on him and right. uh, not necessarily on what he's doing. Yeah. And, um, you know, All right. uh, I think they're two different things. Well, but um, uh, the question would now be for journalism whether mm. you should ignore the amount of information you have because mm. it can be perceived differently mm. uh, from what it is. Mm. You know, to other stories, darkness in major cities as national grid collapses. Again, uh, the Daily Trust did some tie back, time back uh, which suggests that um, in this case, we have had one too many, over 150 incidents recorded in the last 11 years. Uh, basically, it does appear that our own grid is wired to fail. Uh, that explains that, uh, why the, the power supply has been erratic over the erratic, past two days. Very erratic. Yobe's first civilian governor, Bukhar Abba, dies at 75. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria fails to meet oil production target in 10 years. Uh, that's another area where we are losing money. I mean, the world, in some sense, described the Ukrainian-Russian war as another windfall that we failed to mm. partake in, basically. Mm. Um, Atiku presidency clash again over Tinibu's economic policies. I'm not just sure it's about Atiku. I think all of us are on a loggerhead with this government as far as his economic <laughs> policies are concerned. Um, how villagers hid guns after killed after we killed terrorists. So what happened after they killed the terrorists? They didn't oh, So was part of the interview, uh, the exclusive interview, I think, uh, Manit Ali had with uh, the chief of defense now. So sure. basically his point was, after, say, for instance, an aerial attack on whether insurgents or bandits, before the ground troops get oh, there, uh, you know, you have communities who come and clear the ground, with, you know, take away all the evidence, and then it looks like the military just attacked innocent people because you can't find uh, some of those arms there. Or they hit it with the local population that, it, that is later used to, um, you know, attack military uh, deployments in that area. If, uh, so. it, um, a curious mind like myself, mm. you, you then begin to wonder where is the place of coordination in those operations? Mm. How can the military or the civilians beat you uh, to a mop-up when mm. you are aware mm. that you are going to carry out an area clearance mm. and you should have set your ground troops mm. on a standby? Mm. Yeah, that, yeah. Loads of things are not adding up, but mm. that's what mm. it is mm. uh, from the Chief of Army Staff. Mm. And that's the much we'll bring to you uh, from the front page of the Daily Trust. All right, let's take a look at the Daily Sun newspaper for today. Here's what it looks like. Um, Edo Guba, PDP, Ward Congresses, Free, Fair and Credible, according to Governor Mba. Makinde rejects appointment as Electoral Committee Chair. Are we talking about, um, okay, yeah, so on behalf of the people, why is he rejecting it, um, well, Governor Shea Makinde? Uh, I'm not sure why that is. I'm, I'm sure he's not, he's not, one, he's not one of the popular uh, people in the uh, PDP, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's quite telling that um, the PDP is yet to get his act together, if you ask me. 
Um, page 28 has details on that rejection and the upcoming ward congresses in Edo ahead of the Guba uh, primaries. And electricity outage at airports. Fan on the fire. Okay. Interesting take. Stakeholders cry out, demand compensation. Switch over responsible. Switch over responsible, says airport management. Uh, there's a lot more to that story. It's available for you on page Some 25. Of the you get only in Nigeria. Mm, there are yeah. switches everywhere. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why the Nigerian switches are the ones, you know, that would always have this kind of force. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's really something peculiar about this country. I'm yeah. beginning to, you know, believe that. Mm. APC wins Ebony South senatorial by election. It's too early to judge democracy in Africa, according to Kuka. Says continent must remain true to its human values. Abductors of Kwara Monarch's wife demand 100 million naira ransom. Quite unfortunate. NDLA intercepts 14.5 tons of Ghanaian cannabis linked to wanted drug baron Is there in a ferret Lagos. that is known as a Ghanaian cannabis? Though? Yeah, they say Ghanaian lao. They say it's a strong <laughs> strain of it. There's Canadian lao. Yeah, you know, there's so many names yeah. out there. Yeah. But um, good one there from the NDLA, who I believe is one of those agencies that's really been making Nigerians feel proud yeah. that it's uh, been active. Name terror sponsors, laundering money, SCSN challenges EFCC. And that's, that's my, you know, my grouse with the whole comment made by the EFCC chairman last week. You know, why stop short of, you know, telling us what is wrong with the society? How about tell us how you're working around to fix it? I know it could be, uh, you know, prejudice to, to name them, especially if they have not been convicted uh, or found guilty by a court of law. However, he didn't tell us whether they are proceeding yeah. to you know to to go ahead with you know the prosecution of that case i think it's a template that has become common uh, yeah. uh, that is now um, regularly deployed by by office holders in nigeria if you yeah. recall a fortnight ago yeah. uh, the minister for solid minerals said uh, um, highly placed yeah, nigeria is responsible yeah for illegal mining yeah. so what kind of investigation or reports you know reveal that these persons are highly placed and then stopped at that level yeah. you fell short of mentioning so you just them wet or, people's or appetite deploy, and just and just let leave you, us guessing you, you know the security yeah. guys will say highly placed nigerians yeah. are responsible for insecurity in nigeria mm. who are these highly placed nigerians that we just exactly. never find it's as if the there's uh, you know there's a whole it. community of untouchable people right. that cannot be named yeah. or that cannot be prosecuted in the Niger Delta, they will tell you highly placed nigerians responsible for bunkering yeah. this yeah. this basket needs to be unraveled yeah. and uh, we we can all find the willpower mm. if it's not available within the government circle to go after them yeah. once you give us the name yeah if you are not if you don't have the capacity to i do believe so. naming and shaming people especially if they if you caught them with their hands deep in the in the in the pot uh it's only fair because yeah. uh, recall, most of these people that you don't want to name don't want to get shamed in the community right. so there's also that uh let's take one last look at the daily trust uh daily uh, sun newspaper i beg your pardon you can do uh, it <laughs> yeah insecurity Two Catholic priests kidnapped in Joss. Reps, Mull State Police. All right, interesting. Page 4 and 28. That's it on the front page of the Daily Sun. All right, today. we take a quick swipe at the new Telegraph this morning. The major story there says Niger's exit from ECOWAS will affect regional fight against terrorism. And this is coming from a retired general. Mm. Says Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger block exit, big security challenge for Nigeria. Stresses need to spend much more on defense, lack of political will, worsening insecurity. Uh, according to a source, an insecurity now a national calamity. Mm. And this is coming Listen, from Body George. When it comes to when it comes to Niger, for instance, if I were in the shoes of the president, I would prioritize bringing them back to the fold. Uh, we can't secure the entire region by ourselves. And when your immediate neighbor is not on the same page with you or things that you even out undermine their own stability. I think there's a need for a political solution to this one. This whole high-handedness, grandstanding is not going to get us anywhere. I think it makes it worse because he's the chairman of a course yeah. and does appear to want to put out a poster that suggests that he's standing with the, with the entire body, the regional mm. bloc, as against what is in the interest of Nigeria as a country, 
particularly if you think of our population accounting for more than 50% of the entire region of yeah. uh, 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 His I'm interest sure. is yeah. in the safety and security of Nigeria, right? Yeah. And the safety and security of Nigeria depends especially with okay. regards to regional concerns on our, our partnership with some of these countries. So, hmm. All so. right. Moving on to other stories, Africa recorded over 573,000 cancer deaths hmm. in 2022. That is really... I think really the number, huge. say by 2050, would be around 30-something million or thereabout. That's, yeah. that's crazy. It's quite staggering. All right. Um, now here, the, the Delta State Governor, the COA doesn't interfere. In Delta governor, uh, governance, rather, he's saying, Obowe Wurori. I'm sorry if I pronounce that wrongly. Obori Vori. Yeah. Obori Vori. <laughs> yeah. Edo Guba. Nine aspirants boycott PDP World Congresses. Makinde withdraws as committee chair. There's a whole lot of politicking happening mm. uh, there. And to other stories, Nigeria thrown into darkness again as national grid collapses. Protest rocks Kaduna as stray bullet kills one during Saturday by election. Abori Shade kidnapping poor economy. Kidnapping poor economy may make Tinubu Nigeria's worst president. Hmm. Uh, which Abori Shade is this? Is it the one that was a former uh, is it just of, Is it just uh, me or is it becoming true that, you know, when it comes to lead political leadership, you know, it, it always seems to get worse from one president to the other. One would say, I mean, I think the Yer Adwa administration was seemingly seemingly doing better than the Obasanjo administration for some time. And then, good luck, Jonathan came in, and then we say, oh, we miss Yara Adwa. And then Buhari came in, and then we, we thought it would never get worse, you know, compared to good luck, Jonathan. But the overriding, you know, uh, consensus is that, you know, the good luck times were much better, economically speaking, than yeah. the Buhari time. Now, uh, it's almost times three now with what we have with the Tinubu yeah, administration. Yeah, don't, don't. And 2014 just looks like yesterday, but it's like ages ago. True. Hmm. All right, uh, quickly, two other stories. Nigeria's doctor-patient ratio worsening as 900 medics migrate yearly. We have become, as uh, somebody we put um, in Hausa, Giden mm. Kiwo, right. we basically are just providing professional workforce yeah. for the world. If we train so this them, is, Nigeria is where they do their housemanship and then they... Train, gain the experience, yeah. and then t they take a flight. And we don't find anything wrong with it. You recall a former minister... In um, yeah. the Buhari administration saying uh, God, doctors should take to tailoring because we have too many of them. Uh, and uh, there's nothing wrong with people going out for greener pastures. Quite These young sad. men yeah. do not have the energy to engage this country mm -hmm. in whatever it throws at them. They mm -hmm. just basically want to find alternative. However um, indecent, however stressful those alternatives would be. Mm -hmm. And that's it on the front page of the New Telegraph. All right. Uh, let's quickly take a look at... Um the leadership newspaper, before we get into the analysis for today, abducted Ekiti pupils, teachers regain freedom. Senator Bukhar Abba Ibrahim, the first civilian governor of Yobe State, is dead. And um, we're going to take a look at the obituary on the pages of the leadership newspaper for today. CAC hides Intel's ownership, frustrates requests for disclosure. Are we still on that? Well, with the whole Intel situation, it's um, it does appear like an issue that would not go away anytime okay. soon. APC, PDP, NNPP win rerun by election seats in states. Amid hardship, Nigerians struggle with fake foods and products. More on that on page four, and I believe the infographics are supposed to detail uh, the scale of this particular uh, situation. Rumblings in civil service over permanent secretary's deployment. Namibia's president dies at the age of 82 after battling cancer. Minister cancels planned birthday party for husband. Oh, did you see good that call. invitation later? Good call. Good call. Because we would have really not, you know, they say dragging on social media. This would not have been dragging. But then again, uh, this just, you know, paints a picture of how, you know, we're not on the same page with our leaders. Absolutely. You know, we don't, they don't feel what we feel as, uh, you know, average Nigerians. And uh, with that, we just uh, bring in our newspaper reviewer for today, as always, the one and only Mr. Suleiman Obagaya, uh, and of course, former Deputy President, Nigeria Guild of Editors. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on the program, as always. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Good right. morning. Good morning. Right. Um, where do we start from? 
Uh, let's start with the, the tragedy on the front page of uh, the Daily Trust newspaper, the shooting of uh, the teenager uh, as a result of a chase by, the, by operatives uh, pursuing smugglers. Uh, one too many of these deaths have been reported. And Sonia and I were earlier talking about, you know, what could be responsible for this. Where do you stand on how some of these developments happen and how it almost looks unprofessional on face value? Okay, permit me to start by digressing a little bit by congratulating the Media Trust mm. Limited mm. for clocking 25 years mm. of um, robust mm. journalism. Yeah. Uh, the Media Trust, like I did say, the very first time I featured on this program, is an institution of right, not just to those of us that have called ourselves mm. Northerners, mm. but uh, indeed Nigerians across all the divides. Mm. It's an institution we are immensely uh, proud of. Mm. So I congratulate all of you mm. and the rest of the staff yeah, members right, and right. the management, Thank you. Thank you led by my own very good friend, Ahmed Shikaro, mm. uh, for uh, reaching this milestone. Mm. Uh, regarding the issue of um, the teenager that was killed, that was killed by custom officials, uh, I recall John Don, the famous English poet, uh, saying that the death of uh, every human being diminish, diminishes, diminishes him, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he is involved in mankind. But in Nigeria, you know, we hardly we are getting to a level where human lives do not seem to matter anymore. You know, uh, this instance is, is only because of the ingenuity of uh, Daily Post uh, editorial team mm -hmm. that it has come to be reported as, mm -hmm. as, as the lead story. Mm -hmm. But these are things that happen every day. You know, practically every day in one part of the country or the other, you hear stories of custom officials, uh, some form of security officials mm -hmm. killing people one way or the other. And the excuses are almost always flimsy, mm. you know. So I, well, the, the only hope I will have is that maybe with the new custom management mm. uh, headed by uh, Wale Adeni, I think uh, there will be a change in the mindset and the operational attitude of the custom officials. Mm. You know, the way they kill people randomly is something we should focus on and uh, ensure it stops. And, and, and with regards to, you know, what we see in other climes is, listen, they not only take responsibility, they are punitive measures um, uh, for, especially if you're, if you're, if you're, if you have some sort of culpability or whether it's negligence or something like that, but also there is compensation component, which also awakens that sense of responsibility and professionalism in the operatives to say, listen, I have to be very careful with the way I discharge my weapon because if, for some reason, I accidentally shoot an innocent individual, I would have to pay for it, or my agency is going to suffer uh, the brunt of it. Because, like you said, it's an everyday occurrence, yeah. and we've normalized it, and perhaps that explains why it continues happening. Yeah, in Nigeria, things continue to happen from bad to worse, simply because there are no consequences. Yeah. You know, uh, if it were a situation where, when you kill someone, like this teenager that has been killed mm -hmm. in Jibia, because mm -hmm. in Maybe the killer will be punished mm. severely and be made to compensate monetarily for the mm. uh, land that has been lost. Mm. I'm sure the next officer or the next set of officers will be more circumspect mm. mm. in the way they handle their weapons mm. or even the way they chase uh, smugglers. Yeah. smugglers. At times they kill people because of a, a, a bag of rice. Mm. You know, it, has go, it is that bad. Mm. And really, uh, government needs to do something about this to put a permanent mm. stop to it. Mm. All right. Uh, yesterday we had another grid collapse, um, one in the series of grid collapse, uh, over 150 of them in the last 10, 11 years, um, which, which tells the story of the, the comatose uh, that we see in the entire electricity sector. What, what do you think about what happened yesterday? Well, you see, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to say it is such a shame that at this stage, uh, getting to seven decades after our independence, we are still grappling with issues like uh, grid collapse, you know, a lack, of a lack of adequate electricity. I remember watching an interview with the president of Nigeria's resident in Kwadebwa, 
and he mentioned the fact that he has forgotten the last time there was power outage in practically the entirety of uh, that country. Mm -hmm. You know, even the general public that we were supplying with electricity, you know, it used to have more stable electricity yeah, than Nigeria, exactly. And uh, there is no way you can jumpstart an economy that is comatose like ours when you don't have regular supply of electricity. So this is one of the uh, priorities. Uh, it should, this should be one of the priorities of President Tinubu's administration. Uh, I don't know whether the person he has appointed is, um, I, as Minister of Power, is doing the work properly. But it is up to the government like Hadiza Bala Usman, who is the SA uh, in charge of uh, no, public policy, English, yeah. exactly. He said it would be up to the president after six months of the, of the appointment of this set of ministers to take a look at their performance. If they are like anyone that is lagging behind, should be shown the exit door. We don't have time or patience. Do you People think that is that is? Do you think that's realistic, or is just posturing? Do you think someone is going to lose their job because they miss their KPIs? I think we can be fair to this demand and say yes. You know, because at least it has done something by way of suspending beta edu. Some allegations was, was that not a no-brainer? I mean, the, the, the evidence <laughs> the evidence is there. I mean, it's, not as, it's not as if they have a choice not to. <laughs> well, remember... Everything was on social media, the evidence. <laughs> but remember, we have had scandals, mm. probably, of worse yet, when Muhammad Ubaid was president, mm. and there were no consequences. Mm. But that's why I said I think we can be a little bit fair right. to this administration well, by admitting well, that okay. hopefully let's give them a chance. Maybe, maybe we're just lowering our standards. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But this spokesperson will tell you that that's his style. Mm. Right. I said it's stylistics right. uh, for the president mm. not booting uh, people are because he believes in giving everyone a fair chance, whatever that is. Mm. Atiku presidency clashes over Tinubu's economic policy. Is this just an article thing? Who else is enjoying what is happening? In the I think he's the loudest voice over the past couple of days. But I mean, we have to yeah, anchor our yeah, voice yeah. Uh, through somebody whose mm. voice they, they, they probably would not enjoy yeah, because mm, it does mm. appear that our shouting uh, does not seem to ache uh, the government yeah. at all. No, certainly you are right. It's not a typical thing. It's a general thing. Uh, this economic policy or economic environment is impacting very negatively on practically every one of us. They say the rich men cry, mm -hmm. and in Nigeria, it is even truer in Nigeria because practically everybody you see in this country, except for the few that have the privilege of stealing from the common till, are crying. Everybody is complaining about mm -hmm. the economic policy, killing businesses, killing individuals, what do I mean by killing individuals, you know, uh, the fact that businesses are killed, you know, you have, the power you have to procure uh, simple medication when somebody is sick, you know, has been removed from you. So, a lot, a lot of problems affect the economy, and when the economy is bad, it affects other sectors like security, as we are seeing, you know, there is a, a general security meltdown in the country. Uh, it, it occasioned largely, I am telling you, by this issue of uh, uh, poor economic policies. And I am happy that Raikia um, Atiku Abakar has been playing the role that the opposition is expected to play. And that is that of keeping the government on its toes. On it, on it, uh, it yeah. You know, the media, of course, especially the very one mm -hmm. we are working in, uh, the media trust has been in the forefront in terms of holding government accountable. And uh, that is the very reason I started by congratulating you. So apart from the media, or aspects of the media, because I have to be frank, you know, it's not the entirety of the media that is even uh, keeping the government in, in check. You know, it's only a section of the media in the media trust, I have to put it that way. You know, and I'm being very frank and honest. You know that uh, is keeping the government in check. So we commend Atiba Worker for doing this, and yeah. we hope and uh, other elements of the opposition will continue to keep the government on its choice mm. so yeah. that it will give us the best. And how much of this is politics, and how much of it do you think is realistically the government doing its best to stop the bleeding? Because as we always say, government is a continuum. However, we all know that the failed policies of today would have lasting consequences that could last for the next 10, 20 years. So whoever comes in 10 years from now mm -hmm. could be dealing with the ripple effects that, you know, started this year. 
And I think the Tinubu administration has been frank about the fact that, listen, we are first trying to stop the bleeding before we adjust it. How much room sh or latitude should Nigerians give uh, this current administration, given the fact that it's just been, uh, I think, eight months now or so? Yeah, about that time. Yeah. Okay, I believe, um, you see, the problem with giving so much latitude is that everybody, I mean, every day things continue to get worse. And when lives are lost, you know, you don't talk about giving government too much latitude. Mm -hmm. And remember one thing, President Buhari said, I mean, President Inbu, sorry for me, uh, pardon me. <laughs> he said, you know, we've been used to President Buhari for eight years, so, right. uh, you know, I am having that hangover. So, <laughs> uh, President Inbu said he should not be pitied, that he is the one who asked for the job, and that nobody should pity him, and that uh, he's going to deliver. So, for me, the honeymoon period is over. Uh, maximum, we should keep the government six months, okay. and that government is six months elapsed, I think, in November. So that warning uh, period is over. It's up to the government to simply work harder to find realistic solutions mm -hmm. to the multifarious problems mm -hmm. affecting all segments of the Nigerian society. Mm -hmm. You asked the question about how much of it is politics. Mm -hmm. Well, it does not matter because um, even if aspects of what as people like Atiku Awaka has been, have been saying is political. It's only when you give them the ground to uh, to, to mm -hmm. work politically, you know, that uh, they can do so. So if the government had not failed in, in economic policies, I think we would not have had, the, would not have had anything to say creatively mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, the way the government okay. is running the economy. Um, just as a follow-up to that question, in fairness, uh, this government appeared to listen um, we, we seem to have somebody in the frame of a willing reformer, you know, who, as it does appear, is not afraid to be the bull um, in the China shop. What we, however, seem to notice is how much of caution is integrated in that whole wanting to be a storm um, in a teacup. We, we seem to be carrying out wholesale reforms on virtually every aspect of our life, and it is this wholesale nature that seems to be suppressing Nigeria. We don't seem to take a sector, push the reform to a level where we see results and then we come in. He seems to be in a hurry to change everything that is wrong with Nigeria and uh, that puts us where we are. We are battling food inflation, we are battling insecurity, we are battling jobs, prices of petrol, um, which has cascaded to prices of transportation and uh, basically for those of us who still have anything called a job, uh, what we have get at the end of the month cannot take you to the bus stop. How much, what do you think this government is communicating enough or listening enough, you know, to understand that we can break these reforms or stagger this reform in a manner that does not alienate, uh, alienate uh, Nigerians in the process of wanting to give them a better life? Well, first of all, let me commend you for <laughs> inadvertently summarizing the situation. Uh, honestly, the way you captured it is the way it should have been. You know, government should have been doing this economic reforms in places. At times when you are so much in a hurry, there is a tendency for you to stumble and probably even fall. You know, obviously that is what is happening. Uh, regarding whether uh, there has been proper communication or uh, whether in the bid for the government to do what is right, you know, it, run, it can run the risk of alienating itself from the government, I mean from the people. Yes. That is exactly what is happening today. You know, a lot of segments of the Nigerian population are already regretting uh, what we call the government of the day. You know, of course, it may not have been different even if Atiku Abankar or any other person were the president today because mm -hmm. uh, of the eight years of ruination uh, that represented uh, Muhammad Buhari's uh, era. You know, there were so much uh, mishaps, so many terrible policies, you know, that led us to this very point. You know, so um, government really has a responsibility to uh, be explaining to Nigerians uh, each step. Uh, it's, it, you know, the entirety of the processes of economic policies, where it has to take decisions, this uh, decision A, decision B, decision C, and the rest, you know, so that, um, uh, you know, carry Nigerians along, get them to understand why 
things are happening. And the government should come out to say that. Let them not be overprotective of the pre of, uh, the, the president should not be overprotective of his predecessor. I'm not saying he should mess up president, uh, former president Muhammad Buhari. You know, but the truth must be must be said. By yeah. by that you mean we should know what he inherited. Give mm -hmm. us the balance sheet, perhaps, exactly. so that we can measure exactly. Uh, you know mm -hmm. how much mess exactly. we, we seem to be dealing with. Yes, beyond that, also so that we can also see why. Tinubu will have to take certain decisions that he is already taking. You know, but when you keep quiet, already there are Buhari apologists who thought, or who still feel Buhari represented a kind of engine mm. that did no wrong. Mm. You know, so present your balance sheet. When I say balance sheet, I do not mean just the, the financial aspect, yeah. the entirety of the of what you inherited from Buhari. It, yeah. it was Nigerians get to appreciate and understand what happened and why you have to take the decisions we are taking now. That yeah. way, there will be less alienation. Mm -hmm. There will be more cooperation, mm -hmm. you know, oh. on the part of Nigerians. Okay. Uh, uh, still on the front pages of, uh, on the pages of the Daily Trust newspaper for today, CBN's investigators passed Stokes Tinubu's assignment. Now, uh, the presidency says allegations are irrelevant to his current role, and um, uh, uh, an organization is saying crime uh, busters should have impeccable character. Um, is this one of those classic, um, you know, situations where you say, you know, don't shoot the messenger in this case, because it, it seems to be that, you know, uh, the, the, the man at the center of these investigations has some questionable uh, or controversial past that may, you know, dent the work that he's doing. Uh, regards to the assignment given by the president? Well, you see, there are many ways to look at this issue. And uh, Obazi, even though I've never met him, but mm. he's somebody that I hold in a very personally, mm. hold in a very high esteem mm. because of the kind of work he's doing for Nigeria. And I suspected a long time ago that this kind of thing uh, may end up happening. Mm. Because, you see, um, uh, when you are uh, hell bent in cleansing a system that is rotten. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a tendency for the rotten system to fight back, over the whole corruption fighting back. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that is the principal reason why some of these things are happening now. Mm -hmm. But of course that NGO that says, uh, talks about uh, need for, you know, in this Crime case, system have impeccable character. Have, you know, it's like uh, what you said earlier. He who comes to equity. Uh, he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, over this past, uh, whether the allegations are true or not, I have not investigated. Yeah. Uh, should have been, he's human anyway, but then uh, the way he is going, he should have ensured he doesn't have any skeleton in his cupboard. Yeah. You know, if he knows he is going to do the work yeah. as diligently as he has started. In the grand scheme of things, do you think it affects the work that he's doing? Honestly, it should not. Yeah. It should not because, yeah. you see, it will only affect it somehow because now those that he has indicted will have a larger army of sympathizers. Mm -hmm. That is the only aspect. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the truth is most of these allegations, most of what he has investigated are factual. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, those that have been indicted by Obazi mm -hmm. should not have the courage to now leverage on this situation, the try to punish and to tarnish is pendants. Mm. All right. You, you, there are some who also hold the opinion that um, the president probably erred in having the whole investigation center on a special investigator, where, whereas uh, he would have gone with the option of an institutional investigator. Uh, you know, uh, there are big, big audit firms, global mm. audit firms with footprints everywhere mm -hmm. that would have been able to do this job. Or maybe you find a way for the investigator to be part of that whole yeah. synergy. Yeah. Because you're investigating an institution that has been there for over 50 years, mm -hmm. uh, and you're looking at a lifespan of over nine years, one would think that that is such a long time for you to, 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 to embed all of that oppression in, in the hands of one, one man. Uh, don't you think it would, have been, it would have appeared a bit fairer, and these whole allegations would not have been there, if we had allowed an institutional audit rather than one person taking on that responsibility? No, definitely you are right. Uh, institutional audit would have served us more. 
in terms of credibility, in terms of even uh, optimal results, getting the kind of results that are needed. You know, uh, unfortunately, uh, a mistake has been made by appointing just one person to do this holistic thing in a very grand scale that, 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 you know, that they have spent it. And uh, really that mistake has been made and the uh, government can still correct it by Introducing institutional auditors, especially now that his image is under scrutiny, you know, scrutiny. Mm. exactly. Mm. And what about us missing or failing to meet our oil production targets in 10 years? I mean, this is our cash cow, quote unquote. And as Sunday said <laughs> earlier, we're not leveraging on this global opportunity that has been presented to us by the Russia Ukraine war, even the unrest in the Middle East uh, right now is definitely going to push crude oil prices up um, but as far as production is concerned we're not even you know meeting our quota you see the problem is uh, just like Omar Kano Amy as you know said there is need for a holistic reason of the NNPC honestly speaking because if I ask you or even uh, maybe a minister the minister of petroleum resources himself mm -hmm. if I ask him or if you ask him what is the production uh, how much, uh, 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 how much uh, crude oil does Nigeria produce on a daily scale? Mm. The answer can hardly be coherent. There could be discordant things. Maybe Minister A will tell you uh, this, and mm. another minister will tell you another thing. Mm. So we need to first of all be sure. Mm. And secondly, uh, what all this underlines is the need for us to, you know, up the ante in terms of our fight uh, against uh, oil bankruptcy. Mm. Uh, if, you know, we have had situations as in this government recently over the past uh, few months uh, of situations where, you know, oil bankers courageously, you know, link or tap from our yeah. pipelines, pipelines, you know, and uh, they, they get tankers, oil tankers that come from the high sea. They, supply them directly millions of barrels mm. of uh, oil every day of crude oil every day and uh, i have forgotten the figure but every year we lose billions of dollars for yeah. that so the government needs to up the ante in yeah. terms of uh, some rather. some say you know it's institutional institutional theft so to say that uh, yeah. there are people from within the system Definitely, that are you know turning a blind eye to exactly. this uh, that, that is just the issue that simply yeah. turning a blind eye is a deliberate right. thing right okay uh, we're gonna have to leave it here for now uh, Lehman, uh thank you most kindly for your insightful analysis we really do appreciate you for stopping by this morning thank you so much for coming thank you for having me right and this is where we draw the curtains on today's edition of the program thank you most kindly for joining us we do appreciate your time and company don't forget Daybreak returns tomorrow live at 8 a.m. Until then, my name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for watching. All right, uh, Spot 360 comes up next. You want to get all of the fillers from Ivory Coast as we prepare for that crucial encounter, uh, the semi-finals. We are our friendly neighbors, uh, neighbors down the coast, yeah. south of the coast. <laughs> uh, we, we don't want them attacking our colleagues um, after another round of outbreak, hopefully, um, on Wednesday. Uh, you'll get all of that details on our store segment. It's been a wonderful day having you give us direct access to your living room. I hope we have provided you some value uh, this morning. Let's do this again tomorrow. I'm Sunday Michael.